Okay, I'm going to show you how I uh, do the chasing on some of my jewelry. Uh, this is a sheet of 24 gauge copper that I have annealed, which means I've heated it up to a temperature where it softens and um, becomes more malleable. I was actually able to just bend this sheet over with my, my fingers with a little effort. And um, the kind of chasing that I do is called air chasing. Uh, typically with jewelry making, um, I guess you use uh, sort of like a pine pitch or a petroleum-based tar of some sort. Um, I don't know, that sounds really messy to me. So when I saw a video online about air chasing, I thought that's what I'm going to try. Um, and it just means that uh, you were able to push the metal down where there's a gap, where there is, is air. And so, here, maybe I didn't show you. Um, in here, there is a nice little um, gap there. And so that's where we're going to push the metal into and create a really cool pattern. This is an example of a finished piece, and the only thing I did differently with this is I put the metal in at an angle so it created sort of an arrow uh, shape. But you can see it creates a really neat um, pattern. It's, it's, I don't know, it's almost like alligator skin or something. Um, they're always completely different from one another. Um, they're never the same, and I just love the, the look of that. So let me show you how I do it. I utilize um, these little doming um, punches or whatever you want to call them. They're used with a uh, dapping block or a doming block to uh, give curvature to the metal. But what I'm going to do is utilize these to push in these little dots, or these little spots depressions into the metal. And so I'm going to use my good old brass hammer and I'm going to start at the base and just give it uh, some nice pounds on either side, kind of work my way down. Oops, I think I'm moving the camera. Uh, just to keep it upright and not flopping over to side or the other. Okay. All right, so I've got this little sequence of um, um, depressions along the base there. Now I'm going to go ahead and come with a little bit smaller one, and I'm just going to deepen on each side a little bit, make them a little more pronounced. The reason I'm using a brass hammer is uh, because since the brass is soft, it's not going to flare out the ends of, of these little tools like this one is. <laughs> I used a regular hammer on it and um, now it doesn't go back into the block uh, the, that holds all these things in place. So, um, so I've started using my brass hammer like is recommended. Um, now I know why it's recommended. So now I'm just going to work my way up a little bit and again just and getting those spots on either side. Try and keep it even. So I'm going to keep doing this and then uh, I'll come back and show you how it looks in a little bit.
let's go ahead and anneal this. I'm going to turn on my gas. I've got my uh, fire extinguisher right here. haven't needed it yet, but you never know. I'm going to grab a pair of uh, tongs, put them in my right hand because that's my dominant hand. Get some gas going and the flame. I love this butane canister. I love this torch. Simple, easy to get. This I got from uh, Amazon. Now I'm going to heat up the metal until I get a nice dull red glow and then that means that the metal is annealed or softened enough that uh, it will be easier to try and open because now I need to get this crunched up piece of metal laying flat and to try and do it right now would be next to impossible because it's work hard and uh, just doesn't bend very easy. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting a nice dull red glow now. And so I'm going to quench it and then we'll open it. Now that this metal is annealed, I'm going to uh, work to flatten it out. You can see there's some spots that have pinched down on it and I'm going to have to use my pliers to um, help unpinch those areas. So I'm going to work here for a while with my pliers and uh, get this flattened out as much as I can. Here it comes. Okay, so I'll keep working on this, and then when it gets to the point where I can flatten it out a little bit more, I'll show you that. Okay, I think I've got this to the point where I can uh, use my rawhide hammer and uh, start pounding it flat, as flat as it'll go anyway. I use I use rawhide uh, because it's soft enough that it's not going to mar the surface of the copper. Okay, that's pretty good. You can see it's got this really cool uh, texture on there. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and uh, show you how it looks. Okay, here's an example of a couple different pairs of earrings uh, I made by cutting out um, pieces of, of copper after I'd chased it. Uh, this one I used a, a chemical on it to give it that um, that green patina. Uh, here's a pair that uh, the pattern runs this way on it, and I just left them uh, just with a natural patina that I, I did liver of sulfur on to bring out some of the uh, darker spots and then polished it up to bring those highlights out. So anyway, that's how these can be used.